Hey everybody, welcome. This is Leslie from GoToKitchens.com and if you're on Periscope, you're looking at my beautiful uh, peach tree that I bet is going to give me tons of peaches this year. And if you're watching here on Facebook, <laughs> you're looking at me because my camera doesn't face the other way. It just faces me to start out with. So how are you guys doing today? Welcome. You are watching uh, my live broadcast here in both places, Lunch with Leslie. I do this broadcast every weekday at noon Mountain Time. I know, it's beautiful, right? Excuse me. I do this broadcast every weekday at noon Mountain Time. So thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to flip you guys around here on Periscope. Hi. Oh, nope. Patience. There we go. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Thanks for being here. It's a gorgeous day here in Northern Colorado. <laughs> Shrimp. What? Why are flamingos pink? Everybody wants to know why flamingos are pink, right? Why is my tree pink? <laughs> so that's the title of this broadcast. Why are flamingos pink? But actually, we're going to talk about salmon today. So a little bit of a, but it's the same reason, actually. Um, we're going to talk about uh, salmon today, but it's the same reason that salmon is pink is the same reason that flamingos are pink. So it is gorgeous there. <clears throat> a minute early. It's because I was like 30 minutes late yesterday, Clarissa. I had to make up for it. So let me introduce myself super fast. My name is Leslie. Um, I am the founder of GoToKitchens.com. I'm also the creator of Kitchen Anatomy, which is a 10-step kitchen detox. If you want to know more about that, you can certainly message me, and I will be happy to give you that information. If you want more about it right now, it's GoToKitchens.com forward slash Kitchen Anatomy, spelt with A's. Please go check it out. It is a 10-step kitchen detox that is all about detoxification, not only of products out of your kitchen but your mindset about your kitchen because we think about our kitchen as a place where we have to go to work right and not everybody loves to go to work all the time and so I like to um, I like to help you guys detox your mindset so that you want to be in the kitchen so that you'll get in the kitchen and cook so I am also the creator of that it actually launches in May and we are in pre-sale right now so please go check it out um, yes yeah so hi Casey thanks for being here so yeah kitchen Anatomy is our new program coming out if you want more information it is go to kitchens.com forward slash kitchen anatomy spelt with a's okay so let's talk about why flamingos are pink <laughs> I had so much fun. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, awesome. Um, I had so much fun yesterday researching this information. Um, I, I did a little bit last night. I did some more this morning, and I had so much fun trying to think about how I wanted to talk about salmon because really I want to talk about it through, thank you so much. Yes, there's the website. Thank you so much for putting that up there. Really what I want to do is I want to talk about it from a perspective of why you should be eating it and what kind of, hi, thanks for being here, Sarah, um, what kind of salmon that you should be eating in general. So by the way, if you haven't already, you can share out with your followers. If you're here on Facebook, you can actually share this live broadcast right now, just like you would share all other posts. You can share it out and you can comment live right below. I will actually see the comments as they come up. If you're here on Periscope, you can share out right over here in this corner. Just touch that little guy right on top of his head and share out. I would be happy if you did. Um, we can fill up the room. So, um, Flamingos are pink because they eat an algae <laughs> and um, salmon are pink for the same reason except they actually don't eat the algae. They actually eat um, plankton that eats the algae which makes the salmon pink. <laughs> okay, so that's why that salmon are pink. It's the same basic reasons that flamingos are pink and that's why we have the title of that in the scope. So really the main thing that I want to talk about today is the actual the I know it's very interesting right not Spongebob's friend that's right not at all uh, <laughs> but the the reason I want to talk about the pink color is because it is actually hey Evan it's good to see you thanks for being here today um, it is actually super important um, as an antioxidant in the body. It is actually one of the main reasons that I know we all think about eating salmon and we think about getting those uh, uh, omega-3s. Um, <laughs> 
actually they're born gray. Um, flamingos are actually born gray and they turn pink because of their diet. I mean, they're entire, their feathers, their legs, insides of their mouths apparently have a pink color as well. So yeah, crazy, right? So, but yes, same thing with salmon. They eat, they eat the plankton that eat the algae that makes them pink. So yeah, so plankton are pink too, apparently. We don't even know that. It's, they are what they eat, absolutely. So I want to talk about this very powerful antioxidant, and it is called uh, astaxanthin. So astaxanthin is actually an extremely powerful antioxidant that gives flamingo their pink colors and gives salmon its pink color as well. And this is something that we should be ingesting. As humans, we should be ingesting this in quantities. Um, it's what, you know, I'm not big on supplements, but this is actually a supplement uh, that I have been considering. Yes, uh, it is um, A-S-T. A-X-A-N-T-H-I-N. -N. Yep. I think you got it right there. Um, so this is, this is, this is actually a supplement that I have been considering over the past couple of years actually of taking because it is a powerhouse in the body. In the human body, it is converted into a powerhouse. And so, um, but hopefully I eat a lot of salmon. So hopefully in the amounts of salmon that I'm getting, I'm getting a fair amount of it anyway. So <laughs> that's why, cause we eat salmon, dad. <laughs> <laughs> but it is uh, it is a super powerful antioxidant. So basically what it is in the body is that it is a free radical buster. Now we talk about vitamin C being a free radical buster. We talk about all these other antioxidants that are free radical, um, that are free radical busting in the body. But I can tell you that uh, astaxanthin is actually, is actually 65 times stronger in the same dosages than vitamin C. Now, vitamin C is a huge anti-inflammatory in the body, but it is actually 65 times stronger. That is amazing. Oh, there's this new thing on Facebook, by the way, you guys. When you guys hit like, there are all these little thumbs. I don't know if you can see them, but across my broadcast, all the little like symbols go up along my broadcast. It's hilarious. It cracks me up. There they are. You see it? It's like the hearts on Periscope, except they're thumbs. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. <laughs> That's so cool. Ah, that launched today. Okay. I've never seen it. So I was like, what is that? There's little thumbs floating across there. I, it's so fun. <laughs> That's great. I love it. I love it. So, <laughs> So we have been talking all week about sun damage. We've been talking about getting vitamin D. We talked about getting out into sun. Um, we've talked about all of these things. <laughs> I know that's really cool. I love it. Um, we've talked about all of these things of you know of, of getting proper amounts of vitamin D and what the sun does for us and what the sun doesn't do for us and how the sun is not dangerous. Blah blah blah. One of the main questions I had was. I already have sun damage that I had that I didn't know better when I was a kid and I already have sun damage. What can I do to help that? Eat salmon. <laughs> there is a, there's actually, um, yes, so you can watch that in two places. You can watch it on Facebook. There are replays at go2kitchens.com. Find that on Facebook. Follow me there and you can see those replays or they're on catch.me forward slash go2kitchens. Catch is spelled with a K. Um, so, but these this particular antioxidant actually, actually protects you 550 times more powerful than vitamin E. Now, vitamin E is a great antioxidant, but this is a powerful, powerful antioxidant. If you already have sun damage and you want to try to heal that up, this is a great way to do that, is to eat more salmon or to supplement. If you hate salmon or you're vegan or something like that, you probably want to consider supplementing with the uh, astaxanthin. So it is, it is super, super powerful. And basically, we are eating like a type of algae, in other words. Um, it is 11 times more powerful than beta carotene. And you guys know that I am a beta carotene advocate. I love me some beta carotene. <laughs> yes. So it was, uh, while salmon is very expensive, do a supplement option is good. So yes, but it's still never as good as eating the food. 
I, in my opinion, it's always still great to get um, as much as you can in your food uh, beyond supplementing. I'm not a huge fan of supplementation. I think a lot of people get it wrong. I think a lot of people mess up their bodies with it. So, but yes, if you can't if you can't afford salmon, then it would be great to supplement with, especially if you're having inflammation troubles. If you're battling, especially if you want to do it temporarily. So, if you're battling something that is causing inflammation in your body, this would be a powerful, a powerful anti-inflammatory in the body. So you want to reverse some sun damage. This is a great way to do it. It is actually, um, it is actually potent UVB protector as well. So antizan, uh, sorry, astaxanthin, uh, A S T A X A N T H I N. Um, it is actually it is actually for current if you're in the sun now and you want to get some vitamin D eat more salmon because you're welcome um, because it is actually a protector against UVB rays so it actually protects your cellular structure at a cellular level it actually protects you and protects you against UVB rays now I can tell you that I have a friend who spent a month, her name is Dana, you guys probably know her, Whole Health Dana. She spent a month in Hawaii, and I know it's very cool, right? She spent a month in Hawaii, and normally she's not big on getting a tan, right? So. <laughs> this year, she's been powerhousing through the antioxidants. She has changed a lot in her life. Um, <laughs> yes, that's a great, absolutely. Feed him some salmon. Um, so, but she has been powerhousing through antioxidants, trying to ramp up the antioxidants intake in her in her body. And this year, when she she spends a month in Hawaii every year, and this year she has this. She came back with this gorgeous tan. I mean, she's like incredibly tan. She's like normally I don't tan like this. And I, we started talking about it, and I was like, "Man, I, it has to do with those antioxidants that you've been, you know, really powerhousing and eating a lot of." And so, we, I mean, we talked extensively about this, and I just, I think it's so incredible. And as I started doing some research about it after our conversation. Um, it, it, it became obvious to me that it really protects your skin. These antioxidants are incredibly protective to your skin, especially against those UVB rays, which will actually cause you maybe to tan instead of burn because you have a natural protection against it. And we've been talking about this all week, so that's why I'm lingering there a little bit. Um, it's a powerful anti-inflammatory in the human body. Um, antioxidants, they do have an effect on melon, but I don't know, I haven't done the research on that part of it, and so I can't really speak knowledgeably about it, so I don't want to guess. I have some theories that bounce around in my mind when you ask that question, but I really don't want to say, yes, this is what it is, um, because I haven't really researched it. I don't like to throw out information unless I have researched it, yeah, so... Uh, carrots, yeah, carrots are amazing. Uh, carrots are amazing for your skin. Carrots are amazing for your skin. Bottom line, don't juice them. Eat them. Eat them with their fiber. Don't juice them. There's too much sugar there. But putting them in your smoothies, eating raw carrots are amazing for you. <laughs> They're amazing. I eat carrots every single day. It's one of the only foods. I eat a few foods almost every single day. Carrots are one of those things that I eat almost every single day. So, yeah, we're going to talk about that, actually, Harlow. Um, we're going to talk about the different types. Ah, I just lost Facebook. Dang. Hold on just a second. Let me see if I can get it to restart here. You guys bear with me here on Periscope. I'm sorry. I want I want to be able to... Uh, I want them to be able to see that. This is one of the problems with Facebook Live is that we get... Um, yeah, we get a... Every once in a while, I get an inter interruption. So, yeah, darn technology. Yesterday, it was terrible. Yesterday, I had the worst day with it. Hi, everybody. Sorry, I lost you here on Facebook. There is a video below that will be part one of this. This is part two here on Facebook. So, yes, I know. Where's that husband of mine? What's he doing? Where's technical support around here? <laughs> hey, Marcy, it's good to see you. So, it's a powerful anti-inflammatory. Um, astaxanthin is actually an incredible anti-inflammatory in the body. Here's what it helps with. I'm going to read you off this huge list, and there's even even more there's even more I wrote down the few like blockbuster things and here they are your eyes your brain your central nervous system it reduces the risk of cataracts macular degeneration blindness dementia and Alzheimer pass the salmon please <laughs> somebody pass me some salmon
I want some salmon. I have to tell you that macular degeneration actually runs in my family and it is something I do not want. I watched my, here comes my husband. I said, where's my husband? And he, here he comes. He can't stand himself. There he is. Damn. This keeps crapping out on me. Um, <laughs> it's a carrot. <laughs> Robin eats carrots almost every single day too. So yeah, we're carrot eaters and in this. I'm 63 side. and I can see like an eagle. It's true. It's true. He has amazing vision. You can see that he's wearing reading glasses. So that part is not, but out away, he's got like 2015 vision. It's incredibly and he's 63. So there and you go. Doggy likes carrots too. He does. Edison loves carrots. You better be careful. He'll bite it. Is he going to eat it? You going to bite the carrot? Like Ed? Carrots, buddy. It's an interlude here. We're having an interlude. <laughs> we feed Edison carrots as well. <laughs> it's the Edison gets creature food. He gets no cooked foods, uh, but he gets creature foods all the time. So, um, but yes, this macular degeneration, cataracts, things like that are not things that you want. You want your vision. This is how when people age well, they have two things that are three things really that work for them. And that is, I know they're great dog treats for sure. Um, there are three things that really work for them really well as they age. That's typically their eyesight. If they can keep their eyesight two, that they can keep their hearing and three, that they can keep their teeth. These are three components of aging well. And I'm not talking about aging into your 60s. I'm talking about aging into your 90s. Everybody that I've ever known that are in their 90s, 100, uh, Robin has an Aunt Mary who's dead now, but uh, she lived to be 108. And she had three things going for her. She could see into well into her hundreds. She could hear perfectly fine. And she had her teeth. <laughs> so keeping those things intact are really important. So yes, have Alzheimer's in your family. Yeah, have some memory issues. Absolutely. Yeah, those are great things when you start to think about uh, <laughs> bad teeth. How could you eat raw carrots? So shave them. You don't have to bite them off the carrot. Shave them down. Get them into little tiny pieces that you can chew. You know, get them into thin strips. Use a peeler and peel them off. Uh, put them through a grater. Put them in your smoothies. Yeah. So absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I know, Dad. I know. Ah, awesome. I love it. I love it. So, um, but these are three things that most centurions have in common. They can see, they can hear. And I mean, even if they can hear with the aid of something, they haven't lost their hearing completely and they have their teeth. This is something that you want to protect throughout your life. You want to make sure that you're protecting those things because those are going to help you to age well. And again, I'm not talking about the I'm not talking about the vanity of aging. I'm talking about the reality of aging. I'm talking about the reality of being 100 years old. Now, when you think about that, you want to be healthy. If you're going to live to be 100, hi, thanks for being here. If you're going to live to be 100, you want to be well at 100 years old, right? So yes, practical aging. Yes, absolutely. I should write a blog post about that. Practical aging. Uh, that would be really cool. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's one, it's, a, it's great to be, you know, it's great to be 65 and look 45, but if you, if you, if you're 65 and you look 45, but you feel like you're 95, that's no good, right? You don't want that. You, you want to, I don't really care how I look. It's all about how I feel at this point. I want to be my age and feel great, which I do. So yes, absolutely. Um, so this is a powerful thing. So that this antioxidants, um, <laughs> so this, uh, uh, this antioxidant is really, really powerful. So absolutely, uh, astaxanthin, if you want to reduce your risk of cataracts, macular degeneration, blindness, and dementia, and Alzheimer's, then this is a powerful antioxidant for you. I like green tea. I do. I don't like what people do to it, but I like green tea as long as it's organic um, and and you are drinking other clear liquids as well. Here's my problem with a lot of teas and things like that is that people avoid their water content. Um, they're not drinking enough clear liquids. And I'm talking about no lemon, no nothing in your water. I'm talking about just plain, clean water. They neglect that. So <laughs> no, I'm not here trying to sell you anything. This is all free information. It is a train. Yeah, we have a train track not far from us. So absolutely. So there is a book by Bob Capelli. So if somebody can type this in in either place, that would be great. Uh, Bob Capelli, uh, C-A-P-E-I-I. 
I, excuse me, C A P E L L I, Bob Capelli. Um, and it's called the natural astaxanthin, uh, king of the carinoids. So if somebody could put that in there, natural astaxanthin, king of the carinoids, that would be great. Bob Capelli, yes. This is a book that if you're interested in knowing more about astaxanthin that you should read. This is an amazing book. This is an amazing book. Yes, Astaxanthin, the King of the Cardinoids. This is an amazing book. This will make you want to run out and buy a supplement. After I read this book, I was like, should I be supplementing with this? I think maybe I should be supplementing, and I'm not big on supplements. Maybe I should be supplementing with this. Yeah, so, <laughs> okay, good. Have a green tea tonight. That's awesome. Um, so, yes, absolutely. Um, but it, it is a great book and if you want to know more, if you want to dig deeper, if you want to know more about how this affects and how it works in your body, this is a great book to read. So yes. Um, let's talk about the salmon itself. So what are the best kinds of salmon? So if we're talking about omega-3s, if you want the most omega-3, then you need Chinook salmon or King salmon. That's the same kind of salmon actually. Chinook or King is highest in omega-3. So if this is something that you're focusing on in your dietary needs, then and yes, <laughs> they are pink because of what they eat. Absolutely. Um, yes, absolutely. So, but if you want to, if you want to get more, right? Yes, King, Chinook or King, and that is a C H I N O O K. Chinook salmon or King salmon, that's the same kind of salmon. Um, they just, there's two different names that they use. That is actually, that is actually the highest in omega 3s. It is 2.3, it's almost double other salmons, right? It is almost double other salmons. Um, there is also coho, or they call it sil uh, silver salmon, and then there's sockeye, which is red salmon. I actually prefer sockeye salmon. It is what I look for. It is what I search out because it has the highest levels of astaxanthin in it. I get omega-3s from other sources. I get it through flax seeds. I get it through other plant-based. Um, I actually, t that's one thing that I do supplement with on occasion is omega-3s if I'm not, if I don't feel like I'm getting enough in my diet so it's not something that I focus on I'd rather have the astaxanthin which is highest in sockeye salmon yes we're gonna talk about wild caught versus farm in just a second you guys are getting just a little bit ahead of me which is cool I love it that you're already thinking down that path but we are gonna to get to that in just one second um, so that's what you that's it depends on what you are looking for if you king salmon and Chinook salmon are going to be the most expensive types of salmon um, sockeye is going to come after that and then Chinook is going to come after now I'm not saying don't eat Chinook Chinook is amazing it has a great flavor it ha it's higher in omega-3s just a little bit just a little bit <laughs> just a little bit higher in omega-3s um, than the sockeye, but the sockeye has a nice blend of omega-3s and the astaxanthin, which I think is a great balance, and it's what I look for is that sockeye salmon. So I actually get, uh, I have the opportunity to buy sockeye salmon, wild-caught sockeye salmon here locally. Um, we have, I have a fish guy. <laughs> I have a fish guy. I can't believe Robin's not out here singing the song. Um, Yes, that's true, Dad. Yep, you're absolutely right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yep, there's Parachute TV. I do Mondays at 1 p.m. I have a show, Flip the Switch, that is on. So, yes. How do you find a fish guy, right? You need a fish guy. So, you're going to have to Google it. There are tons of fishermen spread out, wild-caught fishermen spread out all over this country, and you're going to have to Google it. I would buy, I would only buy salmon from somebody that I knew. I can talk to that I can talk to about their fishing practices that I know that has uh, that is getting actually Alaskan wild-caught salmon that I trust completely that I know that if I'm not happy with my salmon I can give it back to him here's the great thing about it if you can find a fish guy or a fish girl a fish person <laughs> there could be a fish person there don't have to all be guys um, <laughs> a lot of farmers market check your local farmers market you might be able to find a fish person there um, um, I said fish person, <laughs> fish people. Uh, sorry, <laughs> getting way off track here. I just have this like image of anyway, whatever. Um, but check your local far farmers market. That's actually where I found mine. My guy is called Caleb's Catch. Um, he is, he does sustainable fishing out in uh, in Alaska. 
I like my salmon to come from Alaska. <laughs> the reason I like my salmon to come from Alaska is one, I know it's wild caught. Two, I know that in their constitution, they actually have sustainable fishing uh, laws in their constitution. That is means that the <laughs> that means that the fish is being is being caught sustainable. So <laughs> Craigslist, I need a fish guy, right? <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, you have to send me a copy of that post if you do that. Uh, ask around, ask family, friends. If you know somebody that's eating a lot of salmon, where are you getting your salmon? I'd like to know that. Fish here in Colorado is so expensive because we are in the middle of the country and so it has to get here they want it to get here quickly so typically it's because of the shipping um, Caleb actually ship fast ships his salmon um, and it's so it's been frozen one time it gets caught and frozen one time and it stays frozen through the entire process until it comes to me and I defrost it that's important as well you don't want something that is frozen and thawed and frozen and thawed that actually uh, degenerates the meat and you lose nutrients that way so you want something that has been caught and frozen and you get it and you thaw it out that's the best way to do it so Edison's making all kinds of noises behind me um, so that's the best way to do it so what's the difference between farm raised awesome I love it I love it good for you yes do your research eating well is not always just simple easy peasy sometimes you have to do your research and find your sources for healthy food it's important it's important and here's why when you go to the grocery store, when you go to, and I'm not, this is nothing bad about conventional grocery stores because our conventional grocery store is actually amazing. Um, and conventional meaning that it's not a health food store. It's not like Whole Foods or Sprouts or anything like that. It's just like, you know, ours is King Super or Safeway or Kroger or HEB, whatever you have. That's what I would consider a uh, conventional grocery store. Ours is amazing. However, their fish department stinks. Their fish, almost every single way, every time I go in there to look for salmon, it is all farm raised. And you look at it and it's beautiful. It's really pink and it's so beautiful. And you think, wow, that's really good looking farm raised fish. And you're tempted until you read the fine print and it says that it's been artificially colored. What? What? So they fool you. <laughs> They fool you into believing that it is this beautifully pink color and it's not it's been artificially colored so here's the danger with farm raised salmon now then I would I would say I know it's crazy um, I would say here's what I say about this if your only option is to eat farm raised salmon I wouldn't eat a lot of it but I would eat some of it probably because I, I would want salmon I would look I would look everywhere I could to find wild caught. But if I couldn't find it, I would probably eat wild, I would probably eat farm raised minimally, right? So if I'm in a restaurant, I don't stress about it. I don't, you know, because I know most restaurants served farm raised. They do not serve wild cut. Yeah, <laughs> eat it, yeah, from a can first. You can absolutely do that, yeah. So Excuse me. It comes from the feed that they're feeding them now. Yeah, it's horrible. Actually, they're doing all kinds of modifications and yes. Anyway, um, so but farm raised fish are sick. When you eat a lot of sick animals, you get sick. Bottom line. Bottom line is, is if you eat a lot of animals that are sick, you get sick. It causes disease in your body as well if you eat a lot of it. Now, I'm, not, I'm talking about you're eating what, you know, farm raised salmon every single day. You're gonna, your body is eventually gonna give into those same, not the same diseases because you're different species, but your body's eventually gonna give into an inflammatory state or something like that. Yes, Harlow, <laughs> you really want me to say this. Yes, <laughs> they do. A farm raised salmon, they are in large pens in the ocean. So they put these large pens out in the ocean and they raise the salmon. The salmon are so tight in those pins that they flop, you know, you've seen fish just like flopping all over each other. That's my fish flopping, right? <laughs> so they flop all over each other and they're in tight quarters. They poop at that water, they are diseased in that water, they are all kinds of things. They feed them heavy doses of antibiotics, they feed them uh, an unnatural diet. So farm raised uh, salmon is going to be like a whiter kind of kind of pink color but you're it's going to have a lot of fleshy like white colors in it as well um and it's not going to have that bright pink color naturally um it's not going to have the astaxanthin it's going to have a little bit 
just a little bit of astaxanthin, but it's not going and it's gross and it's not sustainable at all. I totally agree with you, Casey. Um, but you're not going to get that astaxanthin that you get. So these fish are sick. They are, when they are cleaned and sent to you, you're eating sick fish and that will make you sick over time. So you just want to be super careful about that. Um, they are actually higher in fats, but not in omega-3s. <laughs> some farm raised fish, they'll say that it's super high, but it's because they've artificially given them synthetic omega-3s. And so yes, uh, actually it's because of the algae that they eat, but yes, very good. Yes. And they artificially color them too, for sure. So they're highly medicated. They're fed in a natural diet. Um, they're fed pellets instead of algae. So they're fed these little pellets and of course they love them. It's like candy for fish. So they feed them these pellets. Um, and they are, they're, they're given all these antibiotics. They're in pens. They're not well treated. It's just a gross situation. So farm raised out. I think most people know that nowadays, but farm raised fish is just not a good idea. It's just not a good idea. They started doing it because they thought that it was sustainable. Like, you know, it was sustainable for us to farm raised fish. That was their big platform that they stood on. Um, but they're, they're giving us food that is not good for us. So just, just as if you can stay away from it. Yes. Yes. We're going to talk about that as well. So a lot of times you get wild caught and you get a great deal on wild caught fish, right? And it's so exciting because I got a great deal. Typically, if you're getting a great deal, it's too good to be true because it's coming from Asia. Uh, <laughs> it's coming from Asia. It's coming from Russia. It's coming from other cold water climates. And these fish... Um, these fish can have contaminants in them. Now, not always. The real problem is, is that it gets caught, it gets frozen. It is not, it's shipped in a cooler, but it's not shipped frozen because it's expensive to ship things frozen. It's, it's shipped in a cool environment. So it thaws again, and then it gets frozen again, and then it gets thawed again until it finally gets to you. So you lose some nutrients in that process. Um, so that is one of the big things. And then you, the, the contamination can be different in different in different parts of the world, the contamination is actually different. So I always, when I'm eating wild caught, I always choose Alaskan sockeye. It's my favorite. Coho or king is absolutely fine, um, but sockeye is my absolute favorite. Um, salmon actually are one of the only breeds of fish that actually live in freshwater and salt water. So it's one of the reasons why they're so high in natural omega-3s is because of the way that they have to metabolize to change their chemical environment. They actually change their, you know, swimming upstream, going back out to the ocean. Um, but they, they swim upstream to spawn and then they die basically. But they can go from the salt water to the fresh water. Um, and it's one of the reasons why they have so many omega-3s is because of their, the way that they metabolize the chemicals in their body to change their environment so drastically. Um, salmon, wild caught salmon are naturally low in mercury. There will be um, there will be some some mercury in salmon. It is it is unavoidable. Our seas are a little contaminated. <laughs> Even our deep water oceans are a little contaminated, especially near the shores um, where humans live. Um, yeah, higher quality sardines are amazing for you. If you can find good wild caught, they're amazing, amazing for you as well. Anchovies, uh, mackerel, there's a lot of oily fishes that are great for you. Um, but salmon is actually low, is, is low in the mercury level. They actually do a good job. Their bodies actually do a good job of metabolizing mercury out. So it's not left in the flesh when you eat it. I have recently read a study that it actually does lie in their bones. So if you are eating, I, I wish I could find the study again. I looked for it today and I couldn't find it so I could post it for you guys. Um, it is okay to eat the skin. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't like the skin personally, but yeah, you could totally eat the skin if you wanted to. Um, so buy from a trusted source, high in astaxanthins, and then I always prefer it from Alaska. So yes. <laughs> Yeah, I did. I studied a lot about uh, about salmon because I wanted to make sure that I had good information for you guys. So, so there you go. There's the reasons you should eat salmon, the type that you should buy, the type that you should buy based on what your dietary needs are and what your focuses are, and then wild caught versus um, for, versus farmed. So yes, yeah. 
I bet. Yeah. Really good for a coat too and probably good for eyes. There's going to be some omega-3s in that skin, especially, you know how you get the salmon and it has that dark part that lays up against the skin and a lot of people won't eat that? That is actually a great part of the fish to eat. Yeah, that is actually the fat layer between the skin and the meat um, and it's, it's amazing. It's amazing for you. So eat that part. Eat it. Just eat it. If you can't stand to eat it, chop it up in a salad. <laughs> so tomorrow we're actually cooking with salmon. So one of my famous, yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Casey. Um, one of my favorite things um, in the whole of the planet, and I used to eat this, yeah, poaching, smoked. There's a lot of ways you can cook salmon. You can eat it raw. Um, absolutely eat it raw. Make sure you have something that is really fresh to do that, though. Yeah, I wouldn't just start gnawing on raw salmon unless you really understood its source really well and you trusted it. Yeah. <laughs> right? I know. I love it. I love it, Arlo. Um, so tomorrow, one of my favorite things in all of the planet is fish and pasta. I We have traveled a lot through Italy, um, especially around the regions of uh, Tuscany um, and and in the Rome area, you know, in that general area near Venice. Um, this is really, really, really popular in Venice. We've spent a lot of time in Venice, Italy, in that region as well. And um, I love fish and pasta. I love the dishes that they serve that have this amazing fish over this amazing homemade pasta. Now, we are not making pasta tomorrow. <laughs> Not making pasta, just let's get it out there. But tomorrow on For Real Food Fridays, um, I'm gonna be in the kitchen. Finally, I'm gonna be in the kitchen. Whew. It's been forever since I've been in the kitchen. I'm gonna be in the kitchen on Friday and we are actually going to make a salmon. I'm gonna teach you how to oven roast a salmon. The easiest way to do it, um, I'm gonna teach you how to oven roast it. It is so simple, you're gonna freak out. If you're nervous about cooking fish, I'm going to help you tomorrow. <laughs> We're gonna oven roast it and then <laughs> I'm in the kitchen every day, all day, but yes. Um, and then I'm actually going to make a pasta fake out and we're gonna make it with some green beans. And it is like a spring, it is like a spring pasta sauce with tons of vegetables in it. Um, and we're gonna put that alongside the salmon tomorrow. And it's gonna be so yummy, you're gonna be so excited. There are so many great things on this sauce. This sauce that I'm gonna show you goes with all kinds of things, but instead of pasta, we're actually gonna use green beans, so. I know. <laughs> yeah. So we're not going to use pasta tomorrow, but we are going to use the green beans. So we're going to get an extra, we're going to get a vitamin K boost as well uh, tomorrow with the salmon. So what I'm going to show you tomorrow is a meal that if you make it, it is a complete, you're getting all your complete proteins. You're getting tons of veggies. It is an amazing, amazing meal. All the omega-3s, the astaxanthin, all kinds of nutrients and minerals. Um, and it is so easy. And I'm going to show you how to do it tomorrow. So that's tomorrow at noon mountain time. Um, um, yeah, for Real Food Friday. So you guys, um, if you're interested in my new class, Kitchen Anatomy, it is a 10-step kitchen detox right below here on Facebook. If you're watching the replay, I will post a link um, that you can see that. I would love it if you joined me there. At least go check out the website and see if it's something that you're interested in. And I'm gonna, you guys hang with me here on Periscope. I'm gonna say goodbye to Facebook. Um, and then I will be right back here on Periscope. So you guys stay right there. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Woo, barking. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining me. That's Edison, the Labradoodle, who also wants to say goodbye. <laughs> Go to kitchens.com. There's a link right below for recipes and all kinds of great information. Um, and stick with me here on my Facebook page because we put up our events. We put up everything that's happening right here on this Facebook page. Please feel free to share out all my broadcasts, all the memes, all the recipes. I love it when you share out. Thank you so much for doing that. Invite your friends. And I will see you back here tomorrow at noon for For Real Food Friday. Bye. Okay, guys. Uh, anybody here? <laughs> I know he had to say goodbye too, right? So anybody here that is interested at... Please trust me, I'm not doing this for you guys to say, yes, I'm interested. <laughs> if you are interested at all in my new class, Kitchen Anatomy, uh, the 10-step kitchen detox, and you're not already signed up, um, would you be? is there anybody here that's interested in hearing more? Because I don't want to just spout it out if you're not interested. So if there's somebody here that's interested, just say yes, and we'll talk about it briefly. Anybody here that's interested in hearing that? Me. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Awesome. I get three yeses. We're definitely doing it. So um, if somebody would type in, please, somebody that's here with us, uh, go to kitchens.com. 
Uh, that's okay. It's, it's open enrollment, actually, Lexi. It is going to be open. That the $99 price is just going to be until the end of the month, but then it goes to $149, but then it's open enrollment after that. So go to kitchens.com forward slash kitchenatomy, spelt with A's. If somebody could type that in for me, go to kitchens.com forward slash kitchenatomy. Yeah, so you can take it whenever you want. It's not just for this, not just for this period. It's not, it's a, it is a, uh, it is a at your own pace class. So yes, it'll be available forever. Somebody, anybody want to type that in for me? Go to kitchens.com forward slash kitchenatomy, spelt with A's. Um, okay, so kitchenatomy is, thank you. Thank you so much, Casey. That's exactly right. Thank you, guys. Um, so kitchenatomy is a 10 step kitchen detox. If you go to that website, go to kitchens.com forward slash kitchenatomy, there is a webinar there that's about 20 minutes long that explains in detail what kitchenatomy is. Kitchenatomy is a detox, not only of what's underneath your sink to get rid of toxic chemicals out. Thank you so much. Um, toxic chemicals out of your kitchen, but it is also a detox of your mindset because I don't know about you guys, but I used to associate my kitchen with work. I never associated it with my health. I associated it with work. If I go in the kitchen, I got to I gotta prepare for a meal. I got to make a list. I got to go shopping. I got to cook the meal, and then I got to clean it up. And it seemed like all these overwhelming steps, right? And I did not associate it with, this is how I stay healthy. When I was diagnosed with cancer, I actually had a, light, a huge light bulb moment. And one of these light bulb moments was, this is my kitchen is a tool for my health. I need to use this as a tool for my health instead of thinking about it as a workspace. I need to think about it as a, I can't wait to get in the kitchen to make something to eat because I love cooking yummy food. <laughs> that is good for me. And so kitchen anatomy is a 10 step process that, that walks you down a path that walks you down a path of understanding how to fall in love with your kitchen, getting a mindset that is ready for you to fall in love with your kitchen. Here's the great thing about it. It is completely, it is completely self-paced. So a lot of you are going to say, I don't have time to do this. I don't have time to go to class and all these time, you know, I don't have, what if class is on a Monday and I have yoga on Mondays or whatever. It is completely self -paced paced you can go at your own pace if you don't have if you don't have the resources to invest in some of the tools we actually have roadblocks set up where it says you can go beyond that and keep going um, but it's completely self-paced each class I would say is probably going to take up about probably about 20 if you did it 10 weeks in a row I would say 20 to 30 minutes each class and then you're gonna have some worksheets that are gonna take up some additional time but that's just gonna be at your own pace there so it's nothing that has to be done you know like straight away um, but it is a detox of your mindset about your kitchen and also some kitchen detoxing as well but it covers all kinds of things it it, it talks about you know the six items that the healthiest kitchens have um, it talks about pantry staples for a healthy kitchen it talks about your workstation. It talks about, you know, these are the things that you need in your kitchen um, to help you on this journey. Here are the things, here are the reasons why you're frustrated in your kitchen, and here are the things to get rid of those frustrations. So it is a it is a total detox of all kinds of things. So if you guys are interested, pre-sale goes until the end of this month. April 29th, pre-sale is over. Um, but during that time period, it's been open for open enrollment now for a month. Um, it is $99. At the end of pre-sale, we will open the class up to regular sales and they will be $149. If you are, if you buy it at $99, one of the benefits is obviously you get 50 bucks off in pre-sale. Class does not release until May, by the way. So, uh, <laughs> no, they're not born pink. So, but class, uh, class actually uh, starts in May. Um, but if you are in the pre-sale category, you actually will be considered a charter member of a GoTo Kitchens Academy. And that means all the classes that we release in the future, you will get a discount uh, going forward. So everybody's guessing. So yes, flamingos are pink because of the type of algae that they eat. They actually eat a type of algae that is high in a, yeah. So I know, Lexi, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> dang, dang. Yeah, so, um, but yes. So that is that is the other benefit is that you will actually be a charter member and get discounts way into the future. So, 
Yeah, you got to get in on that. It, it, you have until the end of the month, Lexi. So until the 29th, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, uh, to do that. So I gave a long pre-sale. You know, a lot of people do like two-week pre-sales, and that's it. I did a long pre-sale on purpose so that people could save up and and hopefully buy it. Yeah, so you can get a good deal on that. So yeah, then it goes up to 149. You still get all the benefits. You're just not considered a charter member, and you don't get future discounts. Or you don't. You'll probably get some discounts, but you won't get the deep discounts. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Hello. Excuse me. <laughs> okay, good. I love it. Your boyfriend's getting your presents. It's hilarious. Uh, Julie, I, that is a great question. Thank you so much um, for asking that question. I am actually, um, I'm actually, I would consider myself self-taught. However, I have major mentors, major players in the, uh, in the industry that have really helped me along. Uh, one of the, my biggest mentors is actually Dr. Joshua Axe, um, who is amazing. Um, but I follow, I follow people that, uh, give us information that I feel like is like spot on. Yeah, Dr. Axe is amazing, and I have taken uh, I've taken several classes from him. I'm actually an ambassador uh, for uh, several of his programs right now, and so yeah, I I do some volunteer work for him even. So yeah, I it, he's amazing, and I I love his work. So yeah, and if you've not seen his new book, Eat Dirt, um, I would highly recommend. Yeah. Yes. So, um, but really, really this all comes from a personal experience of having cancer. I got cancer. I wanted to know why my body produced cancer. You know, the reason of, well, sometimes people get cancer was not good for me. <laughs> I was not good with that. I wanted to know why my breast had cancer in it. And so I started on, I, I spent three years journeying through this before I started teaching it out to people and I got to a point where everybody was like you need to be teaching this stuff I mean this is stuff that you can't just hold on personally to you need to release some of this information out to people because they need to hear it so thank you so much for saying that though that's a huge compliment at one point at some point in my life I would love to get some sort of certification we'll see as we go along I'm so busy right now I don't have time for certification <laughs> so everything's moving so quickly so yes yeah um, all right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. GoToKitchens.com is the website. Please go check it out. Um, there's lots of great recipes over there. It's pretty much a recipe blog. If anything you cook from that website, you can count on it's good for you because I am very picky about the recipes that go up there. Tomorrow, I will be, you're welcome, I will be on live tomorrow making uh, oven roasted salmon. I'm going to teach you the process of that. And then we're going to make a spring pasta tomorrow to go with it. So. Yeah, I've, I looked, I looked into IIN. Um, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Melinda. Yeah. Certified health coaching program. Yeah. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a beautiful day. Enjoy your spring. It's so lovely. It's such a lovely spring, although it's supposed to start raining tomorrow and it's not supposed to stop until Monday and possibly snow. They're saying our mountains, we live in Colorado in Northern Colorado. The mountains are just right over, like right over there, like right there. Um, and they are saying that they are going to get two to three feet of snow in the mountains. <laughs> you have to watch replay. That's right. <laughs> I know. Crazy town. Yeah. Thanks, Casey. Thank you for being here, hanging out this whole time. I know. Yikes. I agree. I agree. But it is spring. You never know what you're going to get. It's roulette in the weather around here. It can be 75 today and snowing tomorrow. I know. I wish you guys would get more rain too. These storm systems seem to seem to be like popping over you. They hit our mountains and develop these storms and then, yeah, and then we get it all. So yeah, I will pray for rain. <laughs> All right, you guys. Love you so much. Have an amazing day. I will see you tomorrow at noon Mountain Time. Lunch with Leslie. For sure tomorrow we're in the kitchen. All right. Bye, you guys.